Interpreting a histogram. You'll either be given a whole histogram and be asked to complete the table, or you'll be given part of a histogram and part of a table, and you have to complete both. You could also be asked how many people are surveyed altogether. So in this example, we'll be given a whole histogram and we have to complete the table. In order to have drawn a histogram, we must have had a group data table, so we need to draw that first, and that will have four columns. As you can see from histograms, it's about test scores. So we'll have scores, frequency, group width, and frequency density. Using the first bar, you can see that from 0 to 20 has a frequency density of 0 0.6. 20 to 30 has a frequency density of 1.2. 30 to 40 has a frequency density of 1. 40 to 80 has a frequency density of 0 0.8 and 80 to 140 has a frequency density of 0.4. Now that we've completed that part of the table, we just need to look at the table. So now we need to fill in the group width. From 0 to 20 has a group width of 20. From 20 to 30 has a group width of 10. From 30 to 40 has a group width of 10. From 40 to 80 has a group width of 40. And from 80 to 140 has a group width of 60. Now, to find frequency density, we have to do frequency divided by group width to give us a frequency density. So to find frequency, we need to do the reverse of this and multiply. So to find the first frequency, we need to multiply 20 by 0 0.6 to give us 12. The second, we need to multiply 10 by 1.2 to give us 12. 10 by 1 to give us 10. 40 by 0 0.8 to give us 32 and 60 by 0 0.4 to give us 24 people altogether. So this is if we just had to complete the chart. The next question might be, how many people would we survey altogether? So to find the total number of people, we need to add up the frequency column, which when we add it all up together, equals 90 people.